right? France, Germany, Austria, Spain, Italy. How about lifting sanctions on Iran? Well, that's supposedly going on. So there's something positive. How about lifting sanctions on Russia to get this absurd question out of the way? And really, do we have to make the fascist clique in Kiev, the arbiters of American foreign policy, this is absolutely crazy. I'm happy to see Obama finally negotiating. Remember that famous quote from Cardinal Richelieu, one of the founders of the modern state, one of the key practitioners of the early modern state. When Richelieu says, you should negotiate with everybody all the time. You're always better off negotiating with anybody and everybody every chance you get. Now let's look at Allen. Allen is out as of early this week. He's announced it. However, he's still in power. He's still carrying out his functions until sometime in November. This is unacceptable. We want him out now. Don't let Allen into that meeting with Putin and Obama. Not to, not Victoria Nuland, not Samantha Power, her loopiness, and not uh, the ISIS czar Allen, and not his pal Petraeus either, if he should try to drop by as a consultant. Now, we claim major credit for this. The Tax Wall Street Party and the United Front Against Austerity, we decided at the end of July that Allen had gone too far when he pulled that coup d'etat, that putsch, when Obama went out of town to Africa and Allen then got on the phone with Erdogan and announced a no-fly zone and a, uh, an, an air exclusion and a safe haven for terrorists in northern Syria, that was too much. So we said, look, we are going to have to fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. And lo and behold, just about the last full day of summer, we got the news that Allen was out. So... Uh, Tax Wall Street Party contributed mightily. A couple of more words about this in a minute. Okay, another segment of World Crisis Radio. Copley here in Washington, D.C., inviting everybody come to the Dog Hammarskjöld Plaza near the United Nations, 2 p.m. Sunday, the 27th of September. Welcome Putin, the peacemaker. This is a chance for anybody to get on the world historical scoreboard just by waltzing over to the uh, east side there in Midtown, the Turtle Bay area at a very nice uh, season of the year. Take a stroll over there, join us, add your voice. Now, uh, of course, what's going to happen is Putin's coming to town with the offer from the Collective Security Treaty Organization to deploy peacemaking and peacekeeping forces. In other words, uh, military muscle to clobber ISIS, to shut them down, to destroy them. This is not uh, a great uh, puzzle how to do this. Uh, U.S. knows how to do it. Russia knows how to do it. I'm sure others would, too. Even France and Britain could do it, but they don't want to. The Russians want to. So if you're concerned with the defense of civilization, it just so happens that that banner is being carried by Putin right now. And that is a tremendous merit. I also want to stress Putin is a benefactor of the American people. He saved us from a useless, catastrophic war two years ago over that Ghouta chemical fraud. Those, that chemical weapon stuff was delivered by Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Those guys, they did it. And the U.S. almost was stampeded into war because of our weak Shlemiel leadership who have no backbone and no brains. And it took uh, the best efforts of Putin and Lavrov to present it. So you can come and say thank you. I would like to say thank you to a benefactor of the American people, more so than most of our own elected officials. So what did we do with Allen? Well, it's simple. We catalyzed the opposition that was there. We're the tax Wall Street party. We don't have the brute force, the muscle to go straight at Allen and knock him out of the box. But what we can do is to be a certain trumpet, not an, uncer an uncertain trumpet, but a decisive trumpet. We can say, this is what has to be on the agenda right now. And the world is a lot safer now that Alan has been at least hopefully put into um, suspended animation as far as his powers in office are concerned. We want to thank Thierry Maison and the Voltaire Network, Réseau Voltaire, 
of France for their uh, and and worldwide, of course, uh, we'd like to thank them for their help in this. Right, they were the the, the principal uh, group that that also uh, participated. So hats off uh, to them. Uh, so that was a world historical exercise. If you took part in it, congratulations to you also. Thanks and con congratulations to our members, Tax Wall Street Party, United Front Against Austerity. For you vermin out there who uh, tried to sabotage it, well, shame on you. Your names live in opprobrium. Your names will stink for 5,000 years, whereas those of the people who joined in this campaign will be fragrant for 10,000 years. Now, um, therefore, a vanguard organization, the Tax Wall Street Party, centralized and disciplined, put out a message. We hammered on it out of uh, probably 60 briefings during the summer months. Probably 50 of them had fire Allen for ISIS in the uh, in the headline or otherwise in the articles. Um, you can read the uh, the summary that I did of why this was necessary uh, and so forth. Now, the other thing you got to bear bear in mind is with this refugee crisis and rumors of economic breakdown and so forth. Take a look at the Philip Giraldi article in the American Conservative back in July about the deep state, the deep state in the United States. And notice that the New York Times saw fit to reprint uh, or to, to rehash those arguments from Giraldi in the New York Times. This is a limited hangout. Mr. Giraldi, CIA officer, knows how to do a limited hangout. He did a very good job on this. He talks about the existence of a deep state. Yeah, there is one. Invisible government, parallel government, secret government, rogue network is the best one in my parlance. You want to read about it, take a look at my book, 9-11 Synthetic Terror, from the battleship Maine to the 1933 attempt to assassinate Roosevelt, other uh, such attempts, the death of Roosevelt in 1945, the Kennedy assassination, Iran-Contra, Bay of Pigs, Gulf of Tonkin, 9-11. That's the rogue network. Um, so what they have here between Giraldi and the New York Times, that's a limited hangout. However, interesting thing, both articles, what name comes up? David Petraeus. So we've also got the British uh, general staff essentially warning Corbyn and others, if you try to go through with any of your reforms, if you want to get rid of the Trident nuclear submarine or leave NATO or cut the military budget, we'll have a military coup. That's what they say. Take a look. It's in the um, Daily Briefing, comes from the London Daily Mail. And we've also got this useful public opinion poll here in the United States. This is coming from YouGov. And uh, will you, would you support a military coup here in the United States? 29% of Americans say, yeah, I might. 41% no, never. Uh, but why was this ever asked? Who, why was this ever conducted? Uh, it looks to me like certain forces in the ruling class, the finance oligarchy, the invisible government itself, are trying to prepare public opinion for something. What can it be? Nothing good. So um, it's a limited hangout, but behind that, there may be something that, that will be uh, unlimited and it will be implemented. So the question finally is, uh, with the Russians now are there in Syria near Latakia, the Russian drones are flying. They're going to do surveillance. Uh, we have uh, Ashton Carter saying that it's time to wait and see. That's better than what he said before. Ashton Carter had said the Russians are in danger of pouring gasoline on the situation. How is that? How come if the U.S. doesn't want to attack ISIS, then somebody else uh, should do it? Why is that so uh, outrageous? So all of that uh, going on, uh, is there a plan for authoritarian rule um, from some uh, different uh, point of view. And of course, the refugee crisis is putting pressure on all governments in the West. Right? We've got this absurd spectacle of Serbia and Croatia ex ex exchanging insults, mainly drawn from the, um, the period of the Second World War, settling old, old scores, and so forth. Now, you've also got this thing. If the British general staff doesn't like Corbyn, <clears throat> we just had the explosion of the pig gate scandal. And no, I'm not going to go into the details of the pig gate scandal. You can take a look. We have links on uh, 
in the article that we wrote about this the other day in that daily briefing, morning briefing, a UFAA TWSP morning briefing. You can read all about it. But that makes it more likely that Corbyn and the Tories might be out and therefore that Corbyn might uh, be in. And that would then activate the threat coming from the British general staff. So Colonel Blimp is up in arms. And uh, they tried something like this back in, what was it, 1974, I believe, at Heathrow Airport. There was a kind of a coup, pre-coup uh, deployment. Anyway, governments all over the world are on a shaky foundation. And it means that citizens have got to step up to the plate. Not even citizens, but any person of goodwill is highly uh, welcome. Now, Boehner quitting. He wanted to bring the Pope in. Uh, as I said, he succeeded. Uh, this is a reactionary that has been over overtaken by fascists. He told Politico a little while ago, if you're a garbage man, you get used to the smell of garbage. If you're in jail, you get used to being a prisoner. You get used to anything. Um, so goodbye to Boehner. He was, of course, again, a reactionary. He was an enemy of all positive values, uh, but uh, there were certain limits, whereas with this, this Freedom Caucus, there are no limits whatsoever. So now are we going to get a government shutdown on October 1st? Are we going to get a default? Has it been averted? Do we really have to have the entire politics of the United States revolving around a very dubious spliced and edited film about Planned Parenthood? It's a fake video. Going to destroy the United States over a fake video? Lunatics say so. Those are the right wing Marxists. Webster Tarpley here in Washington. That quote I gave you at the end of the last segment the right wing Marxists, this comes from Republican Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunes, who said the right wing Marxists have teamed up with Pelosi. They're Pelosi Republicans. The Freedom Caucus is an arm of Pelosi, meaning that the right-wing Marxists were the Tea Party, and they have now brought down Boehner in this uh, coup. But now we have to move on to Greece, where it looks like there is a new government uh, as a result of these elections. So we always want to appeal to our very astute uh, observer in Athens to, uh, to tell us what's going on. And that, of course, is Michael Chiotinas. Welcome, Michael. Yes, hello. Uh, this, the new government, uh, the result was that, first of, first of all, the independent Greeks, the former Syriza coalition partner, is in parliament and has formed a government with Syriza. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how, how, for how long, but this is, this is what it is. Um, so he, he f for the time... He doesn't have to form a government with Topotami, uh, the river, this river party, or anyone else. But we'll see about uh, what happens if uh, the bailout starts to get to get implemented. But um, the, the the new government is mostly personnel from the old socialists. There are the, many of them, and generally many party members, uh, people who don't have. Uh, the ability uh, to do the job, but mainly people that to to whom um, the party owes favors. You know, this is not very hopeful. It's not bad, but it's sounds very... like uh, apparatchiki, huh? Apparatchiki yeah. bureaucrats, hacks. Yes, but the the main thing here is the political point is that we 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 see a consolidation of this. Tina doctrine. Uh, the, the, what I what I warned against the pre, before the election, we have the consolidation of the there is no alternative doctrine. The election result seems to reflect an image of a people convinced that there really is no alternative. Uh, popular unity, the, this pro Brexit left party, uh, got. 2.9 percent, 2.9, some some 7,000 votes short of the 3% threshold to enter parliament. Uh, the, the only anti-bailout, anti-austerity parties in parliament right now are the hard isolationists, the Communist Party, the KKE, with 5.5% and 15 seats, and the Golden Dawn, Nazis, with 7% and 18 seats. In particular, the Nazis came third 
behind Syriza and the conservative